organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, what some local residents are trying to do to tackle the debt ceiling. Plus, we take a look at the UI's expanding online catalog. And in sports, why the Iowa softball team is getting in some extra practices months ahead of their season opener. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts now. Thanks for tuning in to your Monday edition of Daily Iowan TV, your television, news, sports, and weather source for the Daily Iowan. I'm John Detcott. And I'm Josh Bolander. A group of concerned citizens joined together to try and solve the very same issues to being debated in the halls of Congress. On Monday, the Johnson County Task Force on Aging and the Johnson County AARP hosted a debt reduction summit at the Johnson County Fairgrounds. Among the topics discussed were Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, and how to increase revenue. About 40 people, the majority of them senior citizens, attended the meeting to cast their vote on different issues. Bob Welsh, chair of the task force and former UI professor, said he was surprised at how similar students and seniors felt about many issues. And interesting enough, the students in checking what they felt was the number one way of addressing Social Security was exactly the same way as seniors. For more on this story, be sure to check out tomorrow's edition of The Daily Iowan. The Iowa City City Council held a special work session Monday to discuss changing the way the city approaches immigration issues. The Iowa City Human Rights Commission presented a plan that would encourage police outreach efforts among immigrant groups and increase access to city services for immigrants. In March, the council put a hold on plans to designate Iowa City as a sanctuary city, which would have prohibited employers from asking about an applicant's legal status. For more information and to read the council's reactions, be sure to check out Tuesday's pages of The Daily Iowa. On Monday, the murder trial started for an Iowa City teenager charged with killing a local landlord back in 2009. Daily Iowa TV's Emily Bussey is with Daily Iron reporter Eric Moore, who sat in on the trial's opening day. Emily? Thanks, John. I'm in the Daily Iowa newsroom with Eric Moore. He was at the trial today. Just 17 at the time, now 19-year-old Charles Thompson is accused of shooting John Versipt um, in an apartment complex that the landlord owned. Um, now, I understand there was some deliberation over some pieces of ev evidence today. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, there was a debate over a pair of blue jeans that were stained with blood and the testing that went behind that, as well as um, a ski mask that was owned by Charles Thompson. Okay, and I also heard that there are concerns that prosecutors gained evidence through illegitimate means. Can you talk a little bit more, bit more about that as well? The defense is contending that the state put a man named Carl Johnson Jr. into the same jail cell as uh, Justin Marshall, who's another um, suspect in the case, uh, in the murder trial. Okay. And what can our readers and viewers look for the rest of the week as the trial continues? Well, the uh, selection of the jury will continue tomorrow, um, hopefully to have a full jury reached by then, and the trial will begin after that. Great. Thanks, Eric. And back to you in the studio. Thanks, Emily. And the Iowa House Committee on Education met on Wednesday to discuss changes to the state's K-12 education system. Although no decisions have been made yet, representatives discussed implementing a four-tier classification system to help track teacher progress. They also proposed raising the base starting teacher salary to $40,000 a year and expanding online course offerings and charter schools. The proposed plans will be evaluated again in October. And still to come on Daily Iowa TV, we take a look at why more students are learning outside the classroom. And in sports, we'll tell you why you shouldn't be too concerned with the football team's 2-1 start. But first, Daily Iowa TV's Scott Jones joins us in the studio for a look at your local weather forecast. Scott? Thanks, guys. It looks like we've got another couple of great days ahead. Tuesday morning is going to be cool with partly cloudy skies and 59 degrees. It'll turn out to be another warm one, though, with a high of 75 in the afternoon. And in the evening, we'll see a few clouds move in, and it'll be a decent 62 degrees. In the extended forecast, not too much to make note of, but I can at least say that there won't be any rain anytime soon. We've got partly cloudy skies across the board. 
Things will get a little cooler as we get into Thursday and Friday, but at, by the beginning of next week, we should be back into the lower 70s. So luckily it looks like we aren't gonna be freezing just yet. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Scott. Over the last five years, the ways in which the university can offer classes has changed dramatically, but you might not be able to tell just by looking around campus. Earlier, I sat down with UI officials to go over the numbers and see just how and where UI students can pursue their degree. Students come to the University of Iowa for a quality education, but more and more, they don't have to leave their bedroom to do it. Over the last five years, the UI has expanded the number of online courses it offers by nearly 500%. In 2006, the UI offered just 68 courses that took place fully online. This year, that number is up to 336. Inconvenient as they may be, officials say students should still think before signing up for online courses. This isn't the right format for everybody. So you need to think about whether this is a good way for you to learn or whether you need face-to-face, -face, in-person contact with a professor. The UI is also using classrooms equipped with video conferencing and other technology to make the university more accessible to everyone. But what we're really looking at are students that would probably never be able to take advantage of a, of a traditional campus-based education. But no matter where they do their studying, underneath it all, they're all Hawkeyes. Both Ingram and Rizanka said they expect the UI's online options to continue to increase in the coming years. A car accident ends in one Iowa City man getting arrested for assaulting a police officer. The Iowa City Police Department received reports of a rollover on Cayman Street late Saturday night. When officers arrived on the scene, they found 26-year-old Curtis Smith bleeding profusely from his left shoulder. Smith moved towards officers and ignored orders to stop, apparently trying to attack the officer with his bloody shoulder. Officers were able to stop Smith and take him into custody before any harm was done. On Monday, President Obama delivered a much-anticipated speech addressing the nation's debt crisis. The speech comes a week after the president laid out a jobs plan that encouraged more job training for young people. Obama's plan calls for $3 trillion in debt reduction through an effort that he said is fair to all citizens. We all know the feeling of getting forced indoors because of the rain, but usually they're our own doors. On Saturday night, 19-year-old Rachel Cantu was arrested after she allegedly broke into an apartment on Lynn Street in search of some dry clothes. Cantu stole a shirt from the apartment, but left behind some wet pants and her purse, which had both her ID and cell phone. Security cameras show Cantu trying several door handles and entering four apartments. She is being charged with second-degree burglary. And now daily on TV Sports, Ian Martin joins us at the desk. And Ian, I hear one Hawkeye sports team is a little ahead of schedule this fall. Yes, yeah, softball trying to make some strides in the fall when normally we wouldn't be talking about them until the spring. The offseason is a great time for teams to work on their game, but it's also a time to welcome in new players and build some team chemistry. The Iowa softball team is doing just that. The team began their fall ball this past, uh, this past week, winning their first two games by a very large margin. However, during this time, it's not about the wins and the losses. It's about preparing for the regular season play come spring. Not every team has the opportunity to compete in fall ball, so the Hawks are taking full advantage of theirs while rotating through different positions and getting batting practice against pitchers they've never faced. The girls are trying to improve while in integrating eight new faces to the roster. Our Kate Constable takes us to uh, Pearl Field for a little bit more about what this extra practice does for the team. The Hawkeyes will play eight games during their fall ball season, and although these games don't count towards their regular season record, Ashley Akers tells us a little bit about the advantages of having a fall season. Just being like really intense, really confident, really um, trusting each other. And if you want to check out Coach Marla Looper and the team before the spring season, you can catch them in person at their next fall ball home game, which is on September 30th. And after two less than perfect weeks for the Iowa Hawkeye football team, some, fan have, some fans have begun to doubt Kirk Ferentz and his coaching staff. But Daily Iowa TV Sports' Nick Robertson disputes that notion, arguing that if history can teach us anything, it's that fans shouldn't be so quick to hit the panic button. After a rocky start to the 2011 season, the Iowa Hawkeye fan base has started to hear claims that they haven't heard since 2007 when the Hawkeyes finished 6-7 and seven and failed to go to a bowl game. Those claims are fire Kirk Ferentz. But before you start to grab your torches and pitchforks, it'd be good to take a look back into history. Four different times in Kirk Ferentz's career at Iowa, he has lost in the opening weeks of a season and then led the team to a top-tier bowl game. For example, in 2002, the Hawkeyes lost to the Cyclones in Week 2, but went on to play in the Orange Bowl against USC. In 2004, Iowa lost in Week 3 and 4 to Arizona State and Michigan State, 
but went on to win the Capital One Bowl against LSU. In 2005, Iowa lost to the Cyclones in Week 2, but went on to play Florida in the Outback Bowl. Lastly, in 2008, the Hawkeyes lost 20-21 to Pitt in Week 3, but went on to end their season with a win over South Carolina in the Outback Bowl. So before you send Kirk Ferentz packing, take a look into history. And if we can take anything away from Kirk Ferentz's time here in Iowa City, it is this. Uh, failing is, is education. And if it is, then, then you know, there is some benefit. But uh, there's not much fun about losing. There's not much fun about uh, you know, leaving the door open. And, uh, and when you do that, typically you lose. So you know, if, if we're not learning, if we're not moving forward, then it's going to be shame on us. Nick Robertson, Daily Iowa Television Sports. Thanks a lot, Nick. And staying with the gridiron, two extra notes on Iowa football early on in the week. First, James Vandenberg was named the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week after his three fourth-quarter touchdowns in the largest comeback victory for the Hawkeyes since 1949. The junior from Keokuk, Iowa, also threw for 399 yards in the 31-27 win over Pitt, including completing 17 of his final 20 passes. But while the offense is receiving recognition, the defense is losing a veteran. The team announced today that senior linebacker Bruce Davis is leaving the team for personal reasons, despite seeing action in all three games so far this season. Davis served as the backup to sophomore James Morris while playing middle linebacker, and he had recorded four assisted tackles in the young season. Davis won't be leaving the UI, though. The senior is still slated to graduate in December. It's all for sports. Well, I hate to lose a player, but Vandenberg definitely earned that honor this week. Yeah, certainly so. Thanks, Ian. And only with Daily Iowa TV can you get a sneak peek at Tuesday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about local politicians' reactions to Obama's debt reduction plan, plus take a look into the mind of the Iowa golf team. And before we go, here's one last look at your tomorrow's weather forecast. Tomorrow will be another great day, partly cloudy skies with a high of 75 degrees. And that's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Be sure to check us out at the same time tomorrow or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. For Daily Iowan TV, thanks for watching. Have a great day.